How does the pecking order of the secondary or pull the out? Well, Cameron Curl moves into the job uh, just like he did Thursday night. He moves into it right away. But there'll, there'll be an ongoing competition and, and, and a rotation um, amongst all four corners that, that uh, the remaining four corners that played. You got Tolliver uh, on the right side, you got Brito who can play either side, you got Curl, and you got Chevin Callaway. And, and all four of those guys will, will be in a rotation and, and, and will continue to see the field. Playing with just the Kevin Richardson and Nick Olin. Well, Kevin's, you know how versatile Kevin is. And, and Kevin gets reps at, at, at corner. Get, Kevin gets reps at safety. Uh, Kevin primarily gets reps at the nickel position. And that will main, that will be his primary focus, is the nickel spot. Um, but but Kevin is, is always available to play any of those spots we, we, we need him at. What were your overall takeaways in terms of the meeting game goals and things like that? Great first game. And, and uh, uh, I, I was candid about that with the kids, and, 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 and same with you. We, we came out, and, and our, our first desire is to play hard and play fast, and, and we believe our kids did that. We want to be a, a smart defensive football team, and, and uh, we were that. We, we had very limited number of busts. We want to be a great tackling defensive football team, and, and we were that Thursday night. So uh, you, you hit on those things right away. You, you, you got a chance to play good defense. We, we, we limited big plays, which is another key statistic in, in determining winning and losing and, and how many points you're going to give up in, in, a, in a football game. So uh, coming right out of the shoot, how we, how we graded out in, in, in the opener was, was uh, very favorable. How big of a challenge is it for a true freshman to well, that's a huge challenge, no matter who you're playing. Um, but but TCU certainly, uh, you know, compounds that with with, with him. Uh, I believe, and I've always believed this: the further away you are from the football, the easier it is to play at at a, at a younger age. And, and and the reason I believe that is, the closer you are, the the faster things happen, and, and, and the the harder you're getting hit in the mouth. Uh, every single play. And, and when you're out in space and you can utilize your athleticism, I, I think you have a, a better chance. And, and, and Cameron and, and Chevin, uh, and, and really, you can throw Brito in that mix. He has not played uh, uh, many snaps of football at this level. Matter of fact, he's played less than Cameron has uh, at this level. So I think all those guys um, have, have a big challenge ahead of them this Saturday and beyond. What has Curl done where you put him in first? And just as far as his camp in general. He's, he's, he's a very mature young man. And uh, along with that maturity comes a seriousness. He's an intelligent football player. He's picked up very quickly on, on, on what we're doing and, and how to accomplish it. He recognizes uh, his strengths and, and weaknesses and, and plays to them. Uh, he's a good tackler. He's a physical player, and he's a good tackler because of that combination. Um, those things all allowed him to, to, to rise to the top. And um, not that there's significant separation by him, between him and the next guys, but but enough to give him the nod. So just the scout report on those guys. Looks like they really attacked the edges and they're quick and they had they went up tempo a lot. They're quick and fast, uh, um, uh, extremely fast. And, and I don't know if, if I've ever seen a football team put the sheer number of guys on the field that could just flat out fly uh, like I saw with them Saturday night. Um, they are up tempo. They, they, they always have been. You can pick any game that you'd like, and you're going to see a team get caught with their pants down, being, being out of position, not lined up with, with, with their eyes in the right location. And, and it will be one of the keys to victory for us to, to be aligned properly with great eye discipline and great football stances to be able to match this tempo and speed of Texas Christian. Kenny Hill had a lot of success scrambling last year mm -hmm. in the game. What are the keys to, to limiting that? Well, uh, discipline. Discipline football with, with the edge of, of your defense, uh, first of all, in both the run and the pass game. Um, I, I wish it was that easy in the pass game that, that uh, with, with, with four guys rushing or, or three guys rushing or five guys rushing with the space that you're talking about that you could just say, we've eliminated the, the, the scramble of this player. It just doesn't work that way. Uh, as, as plays develop, gaps are going to open up and, and at some point he's going he's to take advantage of that. we got to retrace our steps as, 
as rushers. Um, we've got to come out of coverage at the appropriate time as, as pass defenders and, and hopefully limit the big plays that could be gained through that. Just what, what's your take on Hill? He's a fifth year guy. Uh, I think he's a quality, quality football player. He's got a, um, he's got an accurate arm. He's got an arm that possesses great velocity. Um, I, I think he's a, a proven winner. Uh, he, he can do it with his feet as, as, as well as with uh, with his arm. Uh, as, as they've undergone a, a transition of play callers and so forth, obviously he still has the confidence of all those people to, to be in the starting role. He just led his team to a, a, a you know a lot of points and in, in, in a nice victory. So. A, a great amount of respect uh, uh, for Mr. Hill. You, you faced Patterson a lot here at Iowa State. Mm -hmm. I guess this was his past season was his third losing season ever there. But every year they they lost, they they come back real big the next year. Kind of. Well, what do you guys says about? It? Well, Gary's a tremendous football coach, and and you know you, to to last as long as you as he has it at one place, uh, you know speaks volumes of for 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 what he's accomplished there both with his staff and, and, and with all those teams. Um, I, th I think it's hard to do that this day and age. I, I think their, their staleness isn't the right word, but, but um, you know, staff and players, administration and fans, and, and to have the uh, endured success as, that he has um, you know, speaks highly of his ability to lead and, and teach and, and coach. Um, doesn't surprise me that, that that would be a mark that if they've had a down year that they've come back. Um, he's a very dedicated Dedicated coach and, and, and demands the same of his staff. Paul, well, you don't play against their defense, but uh, I would assume through the years you've seen mm -hmm. Roots and the way he gravitates towards speed. Maybe not the biggest guys. Yeah. Does this team kind of mirror that? It does. And, and I think the first criterion for, for, for Gary, and, and, and this is not knowing that, of course, is speed. And, and you know, th that's not. Unusual. We we all want speed, but I I think he probably favors speed over size. Now he's always been uh, big interior wise, but as he gets to the edge, even on his front, um, he he has maybe leaner, uh, longer uh, guys that that can that can run as opposed to just take care of a, a gap. And and uh, that's been a trademark of his defenses, and it's one of the reasons why they've been uh, been playmakers um, and and created a lot of negative yardage plays as well as turnovers and, and have been very successful in that regard. He, he's, he's a guy, and, and uh, another, this is not unusual, but he, he really believes in taking offensive skill players uh, and, and placing them on the defensive side of the ball, maybe even more than, than, than I would. I, uh, there, there's always an unknown when you don't see a guy uh, playing the game backwards. He's always playing the game forwards that, that you're not, not sure of whether, whether he can truly do that or not, but he's had great success whether it's quarterbacks or running backs, taking offensive skill players and, and turning them into great defensive players. With the Turpin and the freshman Snell, there's another dimension in that they're so short. When they can come popping out behind that line, is, is, is that a – how does that element play into the game? It's a, it's a big element. I'll go back to uh, 1995, 1996. Um, you remember those years, Bob, right? Okay. Uh, um, uh, Troy Davis, um, uh, <laughs> a, a, a great running back of ours at Iowa State, um, had, had two consecutive 2,000-yard uh, rushing season, only back in the history of college football to ever do that. Uh, um, one of the reasons he had that success, you heard week after week after week, is people couldn't find him. Um, he was behind a massive offensive line, and all of a sudden he'd pop through, and, and it was too late. And, and the same could be said uh, about all those guys you just mentioned, not only those two, but a, but a number of guys. And by design of their offense, with, with, with the sweep stuff that, that's gained and, and then the zone stuff that's inside, um, very easy to, to lose guys. I, I made the comment Thursday night in our game, uh, just because the angle we had in the sideline a couple of times, you, you lost uh, the, the FAMU ball carriers. And I think in this defense, with everything that we have in the middle of it, okay, that, that adds to that. Yeah, Andrew, he had a kind of funny line uh, after the game about the fumble return. He said, 
is a country fumble, a city fumble. Yep. Is that, is that one of your lines? Or I, I've never heard anybody say I, I can't take credit for it. Uh, I give credit to Nick Aliotti, who, who we met with uh, as, a, as a defensive staff at Iowa State here a few years ago. And, and that's how they described uh, a, a fumble in wide open space as a country fumble and, and a fumble in traffic uh, as a city fumble. And, and there are two different ways we respond to those fumbles. The country fumble, we scoop and score, as Andre did uh, so masterfully. And, and then the city fumble is a fumble we just, we just recover. We get on and get in a fetal position and, and, and get that ball covered up. Uh, it's phrases like that in coaching that, that make immediate sense to players that, that I love. I love to use. And, and uh, you know, obviously, when a kid's repeating it, he understands it very thoroughly. And you, what was it like being back down the sideline? Oh, I, I enjoyed it. Um, I, I enjoyed being a part of the game, uh, you know, physically and, and, and not just mentally, which I think is, is the case down there on the sideline. Um, our, our guys were fantastic. They were really into the football game, uh, whether we were making adjustments and checks on the sideline or we were on the field and, and the backups were, were observing what was taking place and, and knowing, knowing what was going on and, and if they got called on what they would have to do. And, you know, that was the case with, with Cam Curl. When, when Ryan went down, you know, it was at camp, and, and, and there he was uh, on the field loosening up and ready to go. The job that Kiero does with you on the sideline as, as you're getting back guy, just the relationship you two have. You saw that, huh? Saw that. Yeah. Um, I, I realized a couple weeks before the season that I was going to need assistance uh, in, in, in remaining on the sideline just out of you know excitability and, and so uh, I, I asked him to, to help me out and, and uh, he made sure to remind me at one point uh, that that was him pulling on me constantly and, and uh, that's that's great we you know we we, um, we did get a penalty on on Thursday night and, and we're, we're very displeased that that took place um, um, but that's, you know, in an attempt that, that we don't get one of those and, and, and certainly don't get another one. How that course fumble and, and scoop and score game came from all the way across the field. How, how pleased were you to kind of see that sort of effort? Great effort. Great effort, and, and certainly wasn't singular. Whether it would be that play or, or, or you know plays throughout the night, but uh, Gabe Richardson gave us tremendous effort in both special teams and in defensive play, and, and we didn't know what to expect. You know, he's he's not at a point where he's a clean player yet. By that I mean that he's mistake free, um, but he plays hard, and, and that kind of effort showed up and, and obviously created a touchdown for us. When you said we got a penalty, was that you? It was. It was not. <laughs> It was not. I'm apologizing to you. I meant to ask Brett that. Who made contact? Was it with a player? I'm not quite sure. Um, I'm not quite sure who that was. You can, you can either confirm or deny. That's correct. I, 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 Terry Fisher, he was the guy I thought I'd be thinking at the red shirt, but I, I don't remember. Was he on defense or special teams? He played both. He played both. I know he covered kickoffs. I don't know if he was on any of the other three units, uh, but he also got some snaps at, at Mike Linebacker. So he played both. And we sort of earmarked him as a guy that's mature enough and physical enough. The fact that he's around this spring, uh, that, that he can't emerge as, as for sure a special teams player and then we'll just see as the season goes you know where depth is needed and how far he advances a linebacker and running back are positions you better you better have bodies and, and, and guys trained and ready to go you know, you know last year's game for three quarters you guys held them down pretty good what are the elements that have to go into place to keep an offense like that from blowing up on you? well being on the sideline is 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 one of them and i, I don't mean to uh, simplistically say that it's a huge part of this game is, is for our offense to stay on the field and, and, and truly win the time of possession and, and uh, grind them out a little bit while we rest and, and, and stay as fresh as we can be. Uh, as you recall, we had given up zero points at, at halftime last year. And at the end of the first half, I saw it and, and then uh, told Rob as soon as we got in, into the locker room at, at halftime, we're tired. Um, we, we will not play nearly as well the second half as we did the first half because we, we just started to get gassed there at the end. So uh, when you have four corners, you you got to be prepared to four, play four corners. When you have multiple safeties, you better be able to play multiple safeties. And that's true at, at everywhere. So we'd like to play a lot of guys, stay fresh that way, and, and stay on the sideline as much as our offense allows us to. Well, I don't want to have a guy like Randy Ramsey who can 
play in, in space like he does and rush the passer. Is that the kind of player you're recruiting for that position? Ab absolutely. Absolutely. And, and the combination of that razor hog position, the more guys that we can get like him, uh, the better served will be as, as a defense. Um, you know, he, he, he's a guy that, that people are going to have to game plan for. Where, where is he going to be? Is he going to be to the field and, and be off? Is he going to be in the boundary? Is he going to be off? Is he going to be playing with his hand down or, or in a two-point stance on the edge uh, to the field or to the boundary and, and pass rushing? And, and his, his ability and, and also his mental capacity allows us to do that with him. Thanks, Coach. Thank you. Thank you. It, it, um, Colo. I thought Colo. Your athletic ability would keep you away from the I was I was out of the way. I was clean.